All right, one more, uh, there'll be a couple more videos on the speed of sound. In this one, I'm going to talk about the speed of sound in air. In air, the speed of sound is significantly lower because the particles spread out to fill up the container, and as a result, there's much less interaction of the particles in a, in a volume of air than there would be in a volume of water or a solid. As a result, if there's an area of high concentration and low concentration, it's going to make mo it's going to take more time for collisions to occur that will cause that concentration to spread out, and so it'll take m longer for the wave to be transmitted from one place to another place. Um, the way that you can try to um, get the collisions to occur m more quickly, well, you have a couple options. If you put the gas under a high pressure, that'll increase the speed of the sound because there'll be more collisions. But a secondary way is to raise the temperature of the air. Remember, temperature is a measure of how fast the gas molecules are moving. So if they're moving faster, that means they're going to collide more often. And if they collide more often, that means that the sound will be able to spread from one location to, a to another location quickly. The actual equation that relates the speed of sound to the temperature of the air that it's in is given here, 332 meters per second plus 0.6 times the temperature. That temperature, the way this equation is designed, is for that temperature to be in Celsius. So don't worry if you have a negative temperature, you can still just put it into the equation and it'll work out just fine. We can use that to solve a simple problem here. On a warm day, 25 degrees Celsius, you shoot across a lake, that's supposed to be lake, that is 750 meters wide. Some of the sound wave goes through the water and gets to your friend first. Other sound energy travels directly through the air and arrives later. The resulting wave sounds like an echo to your friend. How long is there between the arrival of the first wave and the second wave? So what we have to do here is we have to find how long it takes for the sound wave to go through the water versus how long it takes for the sound wave to go through the air. In both cases, we have a distance of 750 meters that that sound wave has to, has to traverse, go through. On a 25 degree day, the velocity of the sound in the air, we'll use that equation that I just put above, is 0 0.6 times the 25. And so we get 347 meters per second. For the water, we're going to use the speed of sound in water, which I had in a past slide here. I'm just going to take a quick look. 1,482. Okay. So the speed of sound in water is 1,482 meters per second. So now we're assuming that the sound isn't accelerating, so we can use our simple uniform motion. Uh, equation, velocity is equal to distance over time, or speed is equal to distance over time. 1,482 meters per second equals 750 meters divided by t. So if I bring the t up to the left hand side and bring the other guy down, I can see that it's going to take the sound wave that travels through the water about half a second to get there. Alternatively, for the sound wave that goes through the air, It's going to take the wave about 2.2 seconds to get there. 2.16 seconds to get there. So you can see the sound wave that went through the water is going to get there a significant amount of time before the sound wave that went through the air. The question actually asked for the difference. So the T of the air minus the T of the, sa the water.
marks the difference in the two times. So 2.16 seconds minus 0 0.506 seconds. And I got uh, 1.65 seconds is how much longer it's going to take. So that is uh, an illustration of how the different speed of sounds can lead to an echoing effect when there isn't actually a reflection of the sound wave.